So this is all about waves, wave intensity, and their energy. I think before we start, it's good to talk about what waves are and how essentially they're created. And so if you see here, you'll see there's some sort of disturbance. And so it's a reminder that all waves or all mechanical waves at least are created out of a disturbance. So as this thing, probably a water wave, um, goes up and down and it oscillates up and down, it actually creates um, a wave as you can see right here. And this looks like water waves. So what it does is that as this oscillates up and down, it pushes these water waves that are next to it. And these tiny little water particles will also push their adjacent water particles. And that's how this kinetic energy will spread from water particle to water particle. And that's basically the whole theory behind waves. The particles oscillate about a fixed point, pushing their neighbors and transmitting energy to them. And if this was a tiny water particle in the water wave, then this would oscillate up and down. It's an important fact to know that this doesn't like travel along with the wave. As the energy travels, um, the water wave is essentially just going to go up as it travels through it and down and then up and down. Um, and so it's important to notice that it's only energy that is trans transmitted by the wave. And this is also the same for sound waves. So if we have, for instance, if we have a loudspeaker and then there's air in here, uh, a lot of you may know that the more like dense parts, the high air pressure parts are compressions. And the low air pressure parts are the parts where there's rarefaction. Well, essentially, the air particles are not going along with the sound wave itself. It's just oscillating over here and here and here and here. And they oscillate so that um, they will all bunch up at one place, which is basically called the compression. And they would basically kind of far away from each other at a place that's called the rarefaction. So it's important to know that the particles kind of oscillate about a fixed point. Now the intensity, because you know, waves transmit energy through it, it's, it's obviously then um, applicable to think about the intensity of the energy and how concentrated is the energy that's kind of transmitted by a wave. Intensity is defined as the rate of energy transmitted, which is also power because you know, um, energy divided by time or work done per time equals to power. Um, so it's the rate of energy transmitted per unit area at right angles to the wave velocity. So to picture this a little bit better, I think we could take a look at this. So we have a, a sort of lamp right here, and basically it's emitting light energy. So if you look at this, you would see that the light waves, let's say this is like the waves, they're going to kind of go in... 90 degrees and onto like a wall or something and that's what makes this like light space so what we're really trying to see is we're trying to see the power so you know the amount of energy transmitted per second per unit area so if this was you know three meters squared then how much is it per meter squared so that's essentially what energy intensity is the um, formula for it would be power divided by cross-sectional area. And it says watt per meter squared. And actually, there should be a negative here. So watt per meter squared. But you could also say it's joule per second per meter squared. You could also put it as that. And you could also divide joule again because joule is force times distance move in the direction of the force. And then you could divide force into kg m out of second square and you can go on and on with this so we can also relate the diameter um, or the cross-sectional area to the intensity so how could we do this um, well the bigger the cross-sectional area the lower the intensity and this is obviously pretty uh, self-explanatory so if the cross-sectional area becomes bigger and the power stays the same, obviously intensity is going to go down. Um, so a big diameter will also relate to a bigger cross-sectional area if you're looking for like a, a circular cross-sectional area. And 
they often ask like if the diameter is double then what will be the effect it's important to realize that radius also it's diameter divided by two is actually squared in the area so it's important to realize that if you double the radius if you double the radius or the diameter you're basically quadrupling the area um so yeah pretty forgettable then if the diameter is smaller, then you're going to have a higher intensity. And this is assuming that the same power is being used. So if we say that this naked light bulb and this kind of torch light, they have the same exact power, the same amount of light coming out of it. But because this torch light is like streamlined and concentrated, the area, the cross-sectional area is very small, whereas this kind of spreads out everywhere and it's much bigger. The intensity of the light bulb, uh, of the... Um, torch light is going to be much bigger. So this is also true for the sun and um, other light emitting objects in the space. So we have to think about the area of the spheres of different radii. Um, that's why the further you are away from the sun, the bigger the diameter of the sun, sun's rays kind of become. In a way, if the sun was here, and then it was like emitting light like this, you could be over here, our planet could be over here, much closer to the sun, in which the waves ha like has not like spread out that much yet, and therefore the cross-sectional area, and hence the diameter, is much smaller. However, if it's more further away, let's say our planet was over here, then the cross-sectional area, because the waves have already spread out so much, is way bigger and therefore the intensity of it will be much smaller. So when they ask you to calculate the intensity that a planet's going to achieve at a certain distance, make sure to relate it to the um, diameter of the certain circular cross-sectional area. So two things affect the intensity of a wave. Um, and they will generally decrease as it travels along. And that's because, first of all, they're going to spread out. And that's what I just depicted with the sun's ray spreading out, cross-sectional area becoming bigger and therefore intensity becoming smaller. However, they can also be absorbed or scattered. So, for example, um, if the sun's rays like go into earth a lot of it doesn't actually end up leaving the earth they actually end up being trapped by our atmosphere and even more so nowadays because of global warming and the thickening atmosphere so there are a lot of things like this which basically just essentially will absorb a part of the rays or they're going to reflect it and then it's going to be haphazardly spread out into space and it's not going to go in the direction that the rest of the rays are going, which is why intensity will decrease. So for these two reasons. Um, so as it spreads out, it was observed that the amplitude of the wave would decrease. So basically, as it spreads out, the intensity decreases as well as the amplitude. And eventually, scientists were able to relate it to say that intensity is directly proportional to the square of the amplitude. Um, and that means intensity is directly proportional to the amplitude intensity, which is, is and k can be our like constant um, amplitude. Yeah, so you can now also rearrange this into this, intensity divided by amplitude squared equals to a constant. So lastly, if I was to put this on a graph, um, intensity to amplitude, it would be curving up like this because um, intensity is proportional to amplitude squared. If it was, uh, hold on, say I is intensity and A represents amplitude, if I put amplitude squared here, then the graph would be just like a straight line from the origin. So yeah. Um, and it's just like the thing with the diameters, it's important to realize that the two times, if like a wave is bigger than another wave, um, amplitude by two, then its intensity would be bigger by four times. So I think that's also important to know. And so that's about it for waves and wave intensity. Thank you for watching.